A lot of people have been asking kind of the differences in quality and ease of use in terms of working remote or with virtual screens connected with your laptop on Quest 3 versus Vision Pro. So thought we could go ahead and test it out. I'll show you real fast. When we go into Immersed, this is the app I like to use for uh, Quest 3 virtual screens. It gives you multiple displays. Notice that anytime I open, at least in my experience, any app that should be kind of AR, it still is going into a virtual environment. I don't know why this can't just load with my kind of space showing still, but okay, here we go. Connecting the agent, my laptop's already on, and there we go. We've got my screens up just like that. You can see my hands are virtual. It puts me right into a virtual space, but I have this little menu that shows up on my hand, which I actually really like. I can go like that, and then actually right here, I can go mixed reality. Okay, here we are. So in mixed reality, we have a menu with different settings, of course. And let me show you a couple things I can do with hand tracking. When I grab a screen, I can move it right here. Same with this one. And you can put them really anywhere that you want. So that's pretty nice. Here's my main display number one. And let me actually show you right now I'm in a uh, higher resolution, I think 3K. If I go to the menu, monitor controls, this is monitor one. We're in 3024 by 1890. Let's go to something like 2560. You can see that one actually changed a little bit. So we can go back. And there we go. And you can also set a portal. So what this does is it allows you to see your keyboard when you're in a virtual environment, because right now we can't see the keyboard. Let's see, keyboard portal. And honestly, this is where I start to get a little confused with the settings. It's not as intuitive in my mind, but maybe it's just me not under understanding how to use this properly. Uh, let's see, portals. I'm not sure about that. But either way, if we exit this, oh, here's my portal. Look at that. Let's make it this way. And so it's, there we go. It's a little finicky, but once you get it, it's actually pretty nice. Like I've got now a little portal as I look around, I have my nice virtual environment and let's see if I can actually change. All right. New environment right here. Wow, this is trippy. Again, just little things like this. I mean, I'm trying to hit X. There we go. Working in this trippy environment here. Let's get back to business. Okay. Back in mixed reality. I think this is how most people will be working day to day. I can see my environment. And... Let's see. So here's a, an example of a video I'm working on right now. And you can see it is a quite large screen, which I can move really any way that I want. And I can make it really big. It seems like that is kind of a max. We can go even bigger. So it seems like there's not much of a limit in terms of the size of the screen that you can make, which is quite nice. And let's get these a little bit out of the way. Sometimes I have a little trouble with the hand and finger tracking. It's not quite as fluid as Vision Pro, but once you get it going, there's a lot more you can do. It's classic, you know, closed versus open. Here with a more open software environment, you can do more. It's just a little finicky sometimes. So now we've got this giant screen. I can work on my timeline or I can go ahead and kind of work on some ads thing that I was looking at earlier. So plenty of room to use these. And then I have my extra news over here on this screen which again, trying to change the screen. And sometimes it's just, oh, okay, with the left hand, it's working. And I can make that bigger, maybe. This is why I would, if I'm working with Immersed uh, or on Quest 3, I'd probably have my controllers next to me. Because with the controllers, it's very smooth. I mean, I can go ahead and move this much more easily, actually. So I don't want to have to deal with controllers when I'm just working on my laptop, but it does make it quite easy. So I think this gives you at least a nice little rundown of what it might look like to work on Quest 3, Immersed, you have multiple screens. If you pay for Immersed, you can have up to five different displays and it's quite smooth. The only thing I would say is in terms of the pixelation, like I can kind of see the pixels, but it's really not bad. I can get away with working like this probably for a couple hours at a time. 
and I wouldn't be too upset. Okay, now we're back in the Vision Pro. And what's nice is immediately I do see this connect button, which I can tap or I can actually just hit connect like that. It's a bit of a smoother process. So I got my screen in front of me. There's no you know, VR versus mixed reality. I'm just kind of right here. I stay in my space. I've already talked about pass through. It looks a lot better, but let's get into actually kind of working in Vision Pro compared to the Quest 3. So first off, the screen is, it's just easier to kind of move it back and forth. I can make it quite big, so that's pretty good. Let's go ahead and we'll just make kind of a little side by side. And for a minute here, I'm actually just gonna make it a little smaller. This is kind of what I would prefer in my actual work. This looks right to me. It's a good size, not too big. I immediately notice that there's much better pixel density. That's no surprise. Reading in here does look clear, it just does. But Quest 3 is not that bad, just to reiterate. You can definitely get work done in there day to day. I think I could just spend a little bit longer on this screen reading and looking. And I feel like the screen is more placed in my environment when, again, my hands just look kind of better in front of it. The pass through looks a lot clearer. So it kind of just helps with the illusion that the screen is just kind of placed right here in front of me. Now, some other questions that people had asked, uh, that I didn't answer before were about display size and resolution. Let's go ahead and put up this 5K resolution. And I was saying in a previous video, it would be kind of tough to uh, work out of this because things are pretty small. You'd have to make each screen quite big on here and probably be zooming in. If I'd open up uh, CapCut was working on this. Okay, then let's go ahead and see how big the screen gets. So, That is about the limit. You'll notice as I look here, it kind of, it comes back. It doesn't go much further than that. I could of course set that screen up here and then walk up to it like this and maybe set up a chair closer to here and then figure out a way to work. And that's kind of a way to hack the system. But I think day to day, most people are not gonna be doing that. So again, if I go back here, it still feels like a lot of space. Now, there are some cool features back on the Quest 3 with Immerse where you can curve the screen a little bit. And when you have a screen this big, that actually helps a lot in terms of readability. Let's go ahead and bring this back to kind of a normal size. And I'm actually gonna change the resolution to something that I would more realistically be using. Now we have kind of a normal two displays. You saw on the Quest 3, I had two other screens with more Safari and more apps open. You can't do that with the Vision Pro. You just have your one screen, but you have apps. So I'll go ahead and open Safari. And it's really a bit more of a pain, honestly, because now Safari will sometimes log out and then you have to kind of log back into different emails and figure out which profile are you using. For my work, I actually need three or four or even five different Chrome or Safari profiles to be logging in for, into different tools. So it makes it a little more complex if I'm trying to work in here with all those different profiles because Safari is not really saving profiles on the Vision Pro version. Now, the nice thing though is that Vision Pro will allow me to move my mouse over here and click and use my keyboard on the Vision Pro app. So that's fine, but it's just not as native as just using your laptop like it is on the Quest 3. So we can just open up one more app, let's say, uh, music. And I'm not gonna open up my uh, messages or anything, but that's the nice thing about it. When you're in Quest 3 and you are trying to uh, do some work and a text comes in, you can't really read that text anywhere. Like you have to pull out your phone and the pass through isn't very good. Here, if a text comes in, it pops up, I can look at it, I can respond. So having all these apps working together on Vision Pro, allowing me to quickly go into Slack or to messages makes it a lot easier, just kind of day to day and more fluid, but you are limited with this one screen. And then of course, at any point, I can go ahead and dial in an immersive environment with really nice fidelity as I look around. I mean, it's quite immersive, uh, but I cannot see where my keyboard is here. So there's no portal feature like I showed you with the Quest 3. Quick side note, found myself kind of working in this platform here for a solid hour. Just one big screen, no distractions, nice environment. When it's dialed in about halfway, I can still see the keyboard and it's really not too bad. What is my choice at the end? 
Honestly, I am going to choose Vision Pro because I can get away with just two big screens and if I need something else on the side, I can make it happen. But then again, the ability to run all these separate apps is actually quite nice and fluid and it just feels much easier to move screens around. At the end of the day though, if you were thinking of a product just for remote work, the Quest 3 is really not bad. It's a great deal for the price. Vision Pro is expensive. You're paying for those extra pixels. You are paying for that fluid UI and everything just working together a little bit more cleanly, but they're really both great products.